All right, folks, today we're going to be working on this paddle shifter conversion. And we started this video the other day with kind of an unboxing and an overview of what's going to have to be done. But I'm going to go ahead and open these paddle shifters. There's the paddle shifter G paddles in these bags here. So basically, what you have here is if you nobody watched the first video, go back and watch it for kind of an explanation. But the older AMG cars didn't have paddles, they had buttons that go behind the steering wheel. So somebody really smart invented these G paddles and they replaced the factory shift buttons. And they are still not going to make the transmission shift faster, obviously, but it's better than paddles. They're a lot easier to get to. So what you're going to need for that is um, the paddles. You're going to need a hair dryer. Reason being is that the factory shift buttons sit in a carriage. Um, if you can imagine, like uh, you know, a bolt going through a hole, and that hole is plastic. And to get the factory buttons out, you have to heat the factory buttons with a hair dryer. So you pop them out of the steering wheel, you heat them until they're all too hot to touch and they become more pliable and then you can take a little screwdriver and pop out the buttons. Now I haven't taken them out yet but I'm about to do that and see exactly what I'm up against. Or you see those tabs right there? You can just file one of those off on the factory buttons if you're never going to use the buttons again and it makes your life way easier. They come right off. So I'm going to take a look now and see what that's going to be like and show you how to get the buttons out of the steering wheel. Got the top down for easier access and lighting. But if you look back here at the factory shift button, it's a housing that just pops out. So I am going to pop that right out and then we'll take a look and see. I know the wire's not very long, so we're gonna take a look and see exactly what we're looking at here once I get this housing out. Supposedly you can just pry it out with a little screwdriver on the edge there where you see the opening. All right, so I used this small screwdriver in my jeweler's kit. At first I was kind of nervous because they weren't coming out easily, but if you take that screwdriver right there and you put it right on the corner there and you just pry towards the steering wheel like this, that way, they will pop out. And here's what you're looking at. So, this is the part that breaks, everybody breaks off, where the paddle, where my finger is. Whoops, I was hitting the zoom button. Right there, right on the corner. If I had two hands, I could show you. But it's literally, let me grab the camera a little bit better. Right there. So now, apparently you can file that center section out and these buttons will pop right out. Or you can heat it up and pry them out and hope you don't bust that little tab right there. If you do, you gotta super glue it back together. You cannot buy these. Mercedes does not make them for a reason, so you have to buy the whole entire steering wheel. So I'm gonna take a look at this off camera and figure out the best way to get this off. I think if you, if you break that middle section off, you can squeeze this together easier. So I'm gonna give that a shot right now. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and break it. Okay, this is what I did, because I don't care about the existing paddles. I took this awesome uh, set of little wire clippers that I have here, and I stuck them inside between the paddle and the housing, and I just kind of chewed the button up until the notch on this side fell through. So now that side is free, and as you can see, the paddle pops right out. Super easy. Now I'm gonna to attempt to put the G paddles in, and I will show you how I did that. I got my hair dryer here. I'm gonna take this hair dryer and heat this up a lot till it's almost too hot to touch so that the plastic becomes pliable, even though I may not need to now. 
I heard that they're a lot easier to get in than take out, but I'm gonna go ahead and as a precaution, I don't wanna break this housing. So I'm gonna heat this up really good right now. Got the other side out. Um, I decided to do this so I could figure out which paddle goes on which side. You can see I did not damage the holes, but I did figure out a way um, to make this stronger. I don't have anything with me to do this, but a washer, a little metal washer glued to both sides would definitely make it so you would not break it or you could repair it with that as well if you did break it. A little tiny metal washer or a ring of some kind glued right there would fix that problem um, for good if you wanted to do that before you tried to pop the paddles in. Um, I'm going to see if I can figure out which side goes on which now. All right, I got the first paddle installed. It was simple. I heated both of these. I literally held the uh, gun up to the uh, housing right there for a good 20 seconds, got it very hot. And then with my finger, I just kind of bent this part right here outward and popped it right in. But it's gotta be very hot. If you don't, you will crack that housing. Now the next thing is a lot of people have trouble with that button being partially depressed when you insert this unit. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side and I'll report back quickly. Just a little bit of clarification here. Um, if you put this in there like this, put that side in its hole, very difficult to do with uh, one hand, but if you put the one side in the hole, the other side, you stick your screwdriver in and kind of turn, it will move the housing outward enough for you to pry that button in right there. Um, I'll show you once I get this one installed. Got both sides installed now. Let's see if I can hold this so I can show you. So with the screwdriver, if you can put it right in there and turn to the right, it will pry the housing out enough for you to slide that right in there. But heat that thing up really good. I put that thing on there for a good 30 seconds and got it very pliable. Once you do that, you're not going to break it. You just need to be careful. Now the key is, does this work or not? This point right here, some people, the button is partially depressed when you put this back in the wheel and you have to take this out and file the bottom of this button down a little bit, which will be not fun because I don't think I have anything to do that with. I'm going to test it right now. Okay, I screwed this up and I don't want you guys to make the same mistake I did. I had to take the paddle back out because right there, that tab, that tab right there was on the wrong side of the housing. It was on the back side right here and the button couldn't press. Make sure that little tab is on the inside of the housing before you seat the carrier. Okay, I had to take it completely back off, so I had to heat it up, and now I have to put it back in without breaking it. Okay, lesson learned. It was so easy before because that notch wasn't in the right place. It's very difficult now because really the whole entire housing back here needs to be spread outward. So I'm going to see if I got some needle noses that I can spread this outward while I push the buttons in. All right, I finally got the button in there with not, without breaking the housing. You can see there, they're in good shape. I don't know how I did it, honestly. I heated that thing up so hot, it almost burned my hand with the hair dryer. So um, that's how hot you have to get it to make it pliable. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and install this right now. Wanted to get this part on video. I'm gonna go ahead and heat up this housing. <laughs> I'm gonna hold it on there for a while. Get it very hot. Good and pliable. And I'll be right back. Okay, notice I got the second side installed with no problems. I heated it up a lot. I got one side in with my finger and the other side I did with the screwdriver. I put the screwdriver right inside that little tab and turned it 
with the housing to come out enough and it popped right in. Okay, I made a huge mistake on this one. I actually did break the button holder right there. I used professional car stereo installation tools, but that little black piece right there is broken off and nowhere to be found. So this button does not stay in now. It comes right out. So I have to figure out how to fix that. Chances are I'll have to stuff something in there to get it to stay or put some silicone sealer. But the problem being that if I get any on this button here, then it's not going to work anymore. I don't even know if the buttons work yet. They feel kind of bound up, so I'm gonna to have to test it right now. As you can see by this uh, demonstration with the numbers on the screen, on the right hand side there, it does shift. This button though is completely loose, so I gotta figure out how to fix that. Out taking a drive, buttons do work. I don't know why it wants to go from four to one, but that's the behavior of the transmission, not the shift pedal conversion. A shift seems to be working properly now I got to get that other button fixed so here's where it broke right on the end right there that piece broke off and it no longer will you can clearly see it broken and I don't think I have the piece I'm gonna try to find it in here but it's probably gone okay how I'm going to fix this after all is I'm going to get some silicone sealer I'm going to put it right here on each side, a drop of it on each side, and then push it back in and let it dry. All right, this is all finished. I got the button mounted back in there. I put some fast dry silicone sealer around that edge, verified that the buttons do still click. So um, this project is done, um, but I'm just going to warn you, I did everything possible when I took out this button. I used a professional installer tool, put it in the edge there, and if you push too far in there, you're gonna break it off. So this one I did not. I used a small screwdriver to remove this one, so lesson learned. You might be better off trying a small screwdriver, a very tiny one, but I couldn't get it in there, uh, get the button out with that. So I broke this one trying to pry it out. Doesn't matter, um, I'm gonna get it glued back in and it's never gonna come out again, so no big deal. That's gonna wrap up this project, folks. I hope you like the, uh, AMG button to paddle shifter conversion and please subscribe for the next video.